Hey YouTube, it's so great to see you today. I'm super excited because I'm sharing with you my live Facebook uh, series uh, that I'm kicking off now. I'm gonna be going live on Facebook twice a month. And today we're talking about vein solutions, natural varicose vein, vascular insufficiency solutions. So I'm gonna get logged on. You're gonna witness this whole thing. So I'm super excited. So let me go ahead and get kicked off here. Okay, here we go. We're going live, we're going live. Welcome to our Friday live series here on Facebook. I am super excited to talk with you today about five natural ways to address varicose veins and support vascular insufficiency. Today, I'm going to be diving into natural ways for you to address these unsightly, often painful vascular conditions. At home, I'm going to share with you a whole bunch of resources that you can implement in your daily lives, I'm also gonna share with you one of my protocols that you'll have access to at the end of this video. And if you are joining us on the replay, there's a giveaway here for all of our live viewers. So I'm really excited to share with you how I recommend or what I recommend as a naturopathic physician to my patients. And this has been patients over the last 12, 15 years who have presented with vascular insufficiency, varicose veins, swelling in their legs, redness, and I'm really excited to just really detail some of these natural treatments because there are traditional solutions that I know don't work. And for many of you who have answered or asked us questions, I'm putting together this live show. I'm also recording on my um, YouTube channel for future viewing. But welcome everybody joining us live and for all of you on the replay. I am really excited to chat about how to resolve varicose veins and unsightly vascular deficiencies or insufficiencies in your legs. So for all of you joining me on the live, I'd love for you to tell me where you are tuning in from. Where is everybody watching? I love to I'd love to connect with everybody. I will be answering all of your questions. So I'm gonna write down Susanna. Hello, Susanna. So also for those who do catch us on the replay, um, I will be popping in and my community man manager, Ella, will be popping in. We'll make sure that we answer your questions if we do miss you on the live. I also want to let you know that we have a giveaway for any of our viewers during the live who comment and give us a heart, share our post, please, um, so that we can bring more folks into our community, but also those who follow um, Juzo, you'll be winning, we'll be doing a drawing at the end, you'll grab a free pair of the 2000 series for, and they have compression wear for specifically vascular and vein support, as well as light lymphedema. So I'm really excited because I partner up we use it all the time and they are so fantastic and we love free things. Um, and speaking of, I'll be sharing with you some more free things at the end of this video um, that we're kicking off over on Instagram. So I am grateful for your time today and I wanna just really dig on in to the most important ways for you to support your vascular health. So. I mentioned before Juzo. Many of you who follow me, you know that I uh, was up in Ohio um, checking out how these products are made. And literally they're stitched uh, with tons of love and about 40 different people touch these products. They hand dye them. And compression is one of your biggest resources to vein management. And one of the things that I find is that folks can prevent the progression of vascular insufficiency by using compression therapy. So I'm gonna share with you like a compression stocking. And when I say compression, it's it's very light. It's not anything too crazy, like you can stick your, your you, you can literally don this or, or put this on easily. You don't necessarily with this, the 2000 series, the lighter compression, you don't need to be like pulling it up and it's really hard. So the thing that I recommend for folks is that compression you can wear while you're walking, exercising, working, and um, then also if you are relaxing or doing home-based activities, compression ultimately is a good preventative tool and a management 
maintenance tool if you are dealing with vascular insufficiency or varicose veins. So I see we have several folks on here, about a dozen folks tuning in right now. And welcome Beth and Susie. Good morning, ladies. I'm so excited to see your beautiful faces on here. I'm curious for our viewers on the live and also for all of you who are watching on the replay, how many of you, and just type in, are you dealing with varicose veins or dealing with um, CVI, chronic vascular insufficiency? Let me know so I know who my audience is and I wanna make sure I cover specifics that will address um, your conditions that you can take these tips away and help you immediately. So compression is number one. I uh, post on Instagram a lot of my travels. I'm traveling now more speaking and shooting video outside of my clinic setting and when I'm on a plane, I always don the compression stocking. So I'm gonna share with you, these are, these are my size compression um, stockings, and these basically go down to about my ankle, and uh, they stretch. I mean, look, this is not crazy tight where you can't get in. I mean, you can kind of see, like, you could probably see my face um, through the, the, the stocking. It's not, it's not overly tight. Uh, axillary dissection. Hey, Wendy, Susanna, varicose, insuffi venous insufficiency, and ankles line. All right, I've got tips for you, so stay, stay tuned in. Hi, Amy. So this goes down to my ankle, and I wear this when I travel. And I'm going to share with you a story that actually has prompted this video series, or this video today. Um, I actually, in June and the first two weeks of July, I had eight business trips. I was traveling all over. And I, um, I don't know what happened. I think I might have pulled my calf muscle, but I thought I either had a DVT, which is a deep vein thrombosis, um, or, or a deep venous uh, thrombosis, like a blood clot in my calf, or I was starting to develop a varicose vein. Hi, Debbie. So Brian had taken a picture of us when we were down in the Caymans, and I saw this vein running across, really popping out. I'm running across my calf and as I kept traveling and we were really active, it started to progress and I started to freak out. So I have recently, when on my last trip actually up to Juzo, I uh, donned all of their wear while I was there and ended up getting Doppler. So Doppler is where you do ultrasound and you assess the vascular functionality, you want to, essentially vein doctors use this as diagnostic tools. And if you guys have had this, give me a little heart that you have had the Dopplers and the vascular assessments. But I swear, I literally probably know too much and sometimes ignorance is blissful. And in this case, I thought for sure, like I probably have DVT. My dad happens to be adopted, so I don't know my dad's side of like uh, vascular history or any type of health history. And so I'm like, well, maybe this is like from my dad's side. Well, sure enough, it was nothing. My pulse is fine. All my veins are functioning properly. But uh, preventatively, I am wearing compression now more than ever because I don't want it to develop. And this is what I recommend for my patients is that, as particularly like Linda, you have varicose veins right below your knee. Totally common in Suzanne. Susanna, it's totally painful. And I literally still have some pain and a little localized swelling as my calf muscle is healing. Um, but there's, there's often a discomfort. So there'll be a burning, sometimes a tingling sensation, a tightness, like I felt throbbing and it felt like there was a string pulling, um, pulling like the cat behind the calf muscle and it'll extend up even beyond the knee. Um, but they're very common knee down. There will also be achiness, heaviness, swelling. Sometimes your feet or ankles will swell. We'll also notice cramps. Like I thought, oh my gosh, it feels like I've had a Charlie horse and that's very common. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about some preventative um, foods and things that you can add into your diet and supplement regimen in this live show that will help you deal with all of those symptoms. And sometimes if it's really intense, there'll be dry, itchy skin. For individuals who have a vascular insufficiency, there will also be kind of a red, reddening, uh, rustiness, where the, the blood is pooling uh, lower in the limb. Compression is great for that. So I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of tools that will address a lot of those um, uh, problematic symptoms that can be very annoying. So, and also I wanna mention before I forget, and I'll be linking this after this live, um, I have written a protocol. So I've been working with folks in the vein 
uh, world, vascular world, for over a decade in St. Petersburg in the Tampa Bay area. I was always a referral source for vascular docs. Even the folks that were having surgery, they'd refer them to me. I would do fitting for compression and also work with them lymphatically. I'm a lymphatic uh, therapist. And so veins and lymphatics go hand in hand. If there's one dysfunction, there's usually a secondary dysfunction. And if there isn't one now, there's, we need to prevent it. So one of the things that I found is I created this protocol because I had a ton of patients coming in to my clinic and I was saying the same thing over, over again and I wanted to address um, resources so that it didn't necessarily have to make an appointment with me, but they could grab and go, you know, a pamphlet that just listed things to do at home, foods that you want to have on your, you know, dietary regimen, supplements that are very powerful for, for both veins and lymphatics. And like, Parissa, welcome. You have venous insufficiency in both legs and they ache. Yes, aching is very common and it is very common to have what we call bilateral, so both legs. But it's also common to have just one leg or one vascular kind of channel that's, that's um, you know, kind of blowing up a little bit. Um, we do find that there is a hereditary component, but also lifestyle. If you're on your feet a lot, if you're sitting too long um, and you're not supportive. So number one, is compression. So I'd love for you all, everybody watching and everybody on the replay, comment down below, yes or no, if you wear compression right now, preventatively, and do you wear compression for management or maintenance? And also, are you flying? If you fly on the planes, are you all wearing the compression wear? So I wanna make sure that we are doing what we need to do to support our body. So. Sometimes I'll just give you a little, little kind of background. So with legs and veins, gravity is not our friend. And that's where we see the, the further down the leg, the more gravity is like pulling at the veins. That's where we'll see a lot of folks that have below the knee swelling, below the knee vascular insufficiency, reddening, more spider veins, varicose veins. And those are all um, preliminary factors to potentially this now moving into a lymphatic condition because 80% of lymphatic conditions get kicked off by venous insufficiency and varicose veins and spider veins are literally the beginning, the precursory signs that you've got a vein problem. Susanna, you're wearing compression. Good for you. I love that. Bravo. Doris, I need to talk to you to order compression wraps. No problem. Linda, no. Amy, no. Uh, hot flashes. You're not wearing them. I totally get it. So um, yes, Debbie, bravo, and we've had communication about that. No to fly, and no, not on flying, please do consider wearing these when you're flying. Indoors, you have lymphedema and need your help. Okay, I'm here, ladies. I'm here for you always. Um, Susie, I wear compression socks to work, and I'm a 9-11 dispatcher because it's a lot. Okay, and you can get up, you know, the one thing, you want to be mobile, and so make sure that if you are on your feet, you take a break, put your feet up. If you are seated, you want to get up and move because exercise is big. So number two, I want to talk to you about usually what happens um, when you go to the vein doctor. And in fact, that was the first dialogue that occurred, came out right out of the, the doctor's mouth before she even did a Doppler on my body. She said, there's surgery. There's surgical options. We can do a quick ablation, really easy sclerotherapy in office. You won't even go to bed, you'll be off and running. So that is really common. And I actually see a lot of folks that have done multiple ablations, multiple sclerotherapies. Basically what they do is they kill the vein bundle. And the reality is your body is intuitive. Your body wants <laughs> its veins. Like it needs vascular channels and it's really smart and intuitive. And if you try and stop it, it's gonna, it's gonna work around you. And literally you stop a vein channel and it'll regrow one. So surgery actually, um, there are contraindications with surgery, and one of the biggest contraindications is that nerve damage can occur that causes uh, grief within the body, within the legs, the muscular uh, capacity sometimes decreases. There's more pain, obviously, when we have nerve um, impairment or infringement, and then we also have swelling. None of those are positive. And so I'm a big like warning, caution when it comes to ablation sclerotherapy. So that's all I want to say about that. We're going to get back into the natural resources <laughs> in terms of all the tools. And give me a little comment. Let me know if you all have tried or had ablation or sclerotherapy. Let me know. Um, say just ablation or sclerotherapy. 
Um, and then dash, did it work? Yes or no? Um, so the third tip that I have for you, and this goes back to Susie, who's sitting at her desk, which is really common. When I'm in you know, work mode, I'm working with folks on the phone, or I'm uh, doing a lot of data work on my website and writing and you know, prepping my, my work here in the digital space, I'm seated a lot, and so this is really common. The other common uh, work function is where we're on our feet a lot. Like when we went to tour Juzo, the, a lot of the folks that are working on the wear, um, and there's machines, there's literally folks that are, are, are knitting, all of this, a lot of them are on their feet a lot. And so when, you know, wait, wait, waitress staff, folks that are, are mobile, we have to support our bodies. And some of that means exercising properly. And I'm gonna share with you the top three exercises that are vein supportive. The first one is walking. The second one is going to be swimming. And the third one I love, which it often is a surprise for folks when I recommend this, yoga. Yoga is actually wonderful for supporting the veins. Part of it's the elongation and the stretching of your ligaments and tendons. It's very relaxing, so it calms high blood pressure, and there's often vascular blood pressure, cardio components that go in with vascular insufficiency because we do have connections with our vein health and our vascular, cardiovascular health. It's all, it's all one hand in hand. So one of the things that I find is that if you do exercise, make sure on a daily basis, 35 to 30 to 45 minutes is really good practice. And what um, I love to throw in, you know, if you're walking, maybe you have access to a pool, you know, three days a week walk, two days exercise in the pool, and then the other two days do yoga. You can do yoga at home. There's yoga apps that are fantastic. And you can literally even do yoga in the shower. And I will recommend folks, you know, they will stretch their legs and elongate those tendons and, and loosen everything up. Lubrication of our joints is really good. So Parisa, excellent question. She asked, which exercises are not good? I find that really intense, like high impact cardio, the, um, the hit type of um programs where like folks are doing really intense CrossFit, that tends to be a little bit overwhelming. Partially, not so much the wear and tear, but partially because the high intensity cardio that's, that's putting people into a cortisol spike, a stress hormone spike, stress hormone floods your vascular channel and actually causes inflammation within your body. So those would be exercises I'd refrain from, like you know, brisk walking, Awesome. Brisk walking actually tends to be long term a much better cardio workout than running and it's lower impact. So the exercises that are beneficial are low impact. High impact are, are, are ones that I would recommend avoiding. All right, Susanna, I did high impact for six years. Not anymore. Bravo. You're doing you're on the right path. Okay, so number four, this is really exciting. And for all of you who are interested in some of the things that I highlight today, I did put some links uh, down below. There are affiliate links, so I have to highlight that. But more importantly, there are things that you can grab right now. And then when I wrap with this, I'm gonna kind of finalize the editing of this video. I'll include a link where you can grab this download. It's $4.99 and it's got a lot of good resources. So Jim is biking. Hey Jim, how are you? Um, is biking okay? Generally, so there's you know multiple types of biking. I was actually watching this really cool video um, in LA of this like really cool studio, like cycle studio, where they were doing they had like blue lights and they had like really cool like pumping like rap music and they were doing like these things where they stand up and like they were doing choreography. Okay, so like that cycling is really high intensity. Now biking like on a bike, you know, like a beach cruiser, kind of tooling around your neighborhood, that's good. So you know, kind of choose your biking wisely, I would say. Um, Parissa is running bad. Generally, I would say walking, brisk walking would be better than running. And Susanna loves cycling. It's easier than walking some days. I totally get it. And cycling can be very good. The one thing that I always um, want to caution folks when it comes to cycling, there are a lot of different bike styles. There are a lot of different positions, biking positions. The positions that crunch in like from your joint, you know, from the hip socket. Like if you're leaned in and you're basically like you've got your torso and your, your legs and you're leaned in, you're smooshing, you're crunching and putting compression on the inguinal nose. These are the lymphatics 
of your legs. That can be a challenge. And so, you know, I kind of use with caution every one of my patients, I get to know their workout schedule, their regimen, and then I make individual recommendations. And so that's something that you want to be cautious about is just not to impair any of your lymphatic flow by compressing the um, inguinals. And those are really key connectors that push fluid up your body. And when you have venous insufficiency, the veins, the leftover blood, this is what happens. The leftover blood in your veins spills out over past the veins into this, this kind of webbing. It's a, we call it interstitial space. There's a webbing and a connection to the lymphatics. Your lymphatic system ends up trying, there are these little vacuums and they suck in the red blood cells and it puts more strain on the lymphatics. That's why 80% of bilateral leg lymphedema is driven by and caused by vascular insufficiency. So if you are watching this video and you have this, I am hoping that we can take these recommendations, you can run with them at home, grab this so you've got all of, all of what you need, and we are preventative that you will never have to deal with lymphedema in your life because if there's a way to prevent it, all of my patients who have it would have done the prevention on the secondary lymphedema side. Primary is hereditary, they're often born with it, but secondary lymphedema, a very, very common cause is vascular insufficiency. Okay, I love hot yoga. Yeah, hot yoga is good. The sweating can be intense. <laughs> I used to have a friend that did that in Boston. Oh my gosh, it'd be like really cold out, you know, 20 below and she'd be hot yoging and she'd just pretend in her brain she was on the beach. Um, okay, so you yeah, have a comfort bike. Yeah, comfort bikes are better. And the swimming pool is fantastic. Yeah, walking in the swimming pool. In fact, there's a workout program in the pool that I want to do a review on. So stay tuned for that. That might come out um, sometime on my YouTube um, channel. But it, you know, walking, uh, you know, cardio exercise in the pool. Oh my gosh, that's like the best. So Susanna, thank you for for um, adding that in. Okay, so we're we're up to herbals, and I want to talk to you about the number one herbal. There's a lot of clinical data, a lot of research that this particular herbal therapy is so fantastic for your veins. And again, if you are dealing with venous insufficiency or are trying to prevent it because you've got spider veins, you're kind of noticing like, hmm, seeing more veins, more vascularity in my legs than normal. I'm swelling a little bit more. This is perfect to implement pronto because it will both support your veins the vascular channels and the capillaries of your legs, your entire body too, but we're focused a lot on the legs here, and also your lymphatics. And it is called horse chestnut. I have two links down below to our online supplement store. Um, there is a horse chestnut supreme that has horse chestnut and other herbals blended. So it is a supremo supportive for your veins. What the ch horse chestnut, chestnut does is it actually reduces the leg pain, the heaviness, um, some of those cramps that you might get, or it feels like you had a Charlie horse. And then you'll also notice that the swelling gets resolved and it's so fantastic. So love it. Susanna, yes, rebounding is so fantastic. So horse chestnut, there are a ton of other herbals. So if you guys want my full list, of very pro-vein related herbs and pro-lymphatic related herbs for full support, that's in that protocol. And that will be on the link um, after this is all wrapped. Um, okay, so I had some questions. So Susanna, rebounding, yes, great. And we'll provide a link. Carmela or Ella, you'll see Carmela Cruz. Ella, um, will, I'll have her grab, she's my community manager. I'll have her grab some of my rebounding videos and we'll put a link of those here in the description so you can go right on over to watch my YouTube channel. I have a ton of video content and even alternate rebounding where you might not necessarily have like the knee or hip strength or even feel like bouncing up and down. It's really fun, kind of to harness your inner child as you're bouncing, but the bouncing opens up the lymph valves and moves fluid up through the lymphatic channels. That's very good for vascular insufficiency. And I had somebody ask, let's see, what causes, Parissa, what causes vascular insufficiency? Um, so there, there are a lot of different reasons. Um, the biggest one is hereditary and genetic. So we have some predispositions to it. It affects globally more than 30%. So a third or more of our population deals with this. So I mean, think about it, like we have 15 of you watching right now, we'll probably have hundreds watch on the replay. 
a third of you right now have some vein component at play. And if you aren't, you might be having it come up. So prevention is key, and that's why we're talking about this. But there are several kind of lifestyle things. So, you know, unhealthy diets are a factor, a lot of inflammation in the body, um, and then exercise, either too much exercise, a lack of exercise, um, strain on your vascular channel. So there's any cardiovascular degeneration. Um, and then also, um, just kind of lifestyle things like we're seated a lot or we're on our feet a lot. And so what you'll find is a lot of professions and it, you won't even notice this, but now that I say this, you will. And I notice it because I'm all about compression therapy, but like your flight attendants, your wait, waitresses, your wait staff, people who are on the, their feet all the time are wearing compression. A lot of it are those nude stockings, and so it's hard to tell, but there's compression, they're compression grade. They actually are going to flush and keep support to the vascular channel. That's why compression is really impactful and very supportive um, of not just the lymphatics, but also those veins. Just keeps them all kind of tight so they can't spill over or, or grow in size. Weight gain is definitely another factor. Hormones are another one. Um, and we will definitely get to foods. I'm going to highlight foods that are most impactful and you can kind of make up your mind of some of the other foods to avoid. But I just really want to give you some key, key tips here that will be impactful. And Debbie, you do the yoga ball chair rebounding. Yay. I love that. It's so fun. Um, and that yoga ball chair was on our holiday, um, healthy holiday gift guide of 28. No, tw yeah, 2018. We're, tw we're in 2019. Can you believe it? And oh, by the way, it's almost August. Um, so yeah, that is huge. The, the rebounding is so fan so fantastic. Um, so yeah, so I saw a comment about horse chestnut. It really does help with the pain, the inflammation, um, and then it's very, very supportive of the functionality and the mechanics of your vascular channel. And ultimately, the meltdown of the mechanical pumping faction, function of your veins is what causes vascular insufficiency, varicose veins, spider veins. You want your veins ideally to be pumping up and down, you know, so you've got blood flow going down and blood flow moving up, so up and down, and then out and in. And sometimes the outward uh, function doesn't happen, sometimes the upward function do doesn't happen, it's an assortment of those functionalities. Um, so mechanically, it's, it's a, a, a meltdown. And so we can mechanically support the body with compression wear and um, also with the herbal uh, protocols as well. The other thing is that food is a big factor. And I did see um, specific, I think Amy had commented, she wanted to know a little bit more about food. Um, so Amy, a question first on compression pumps, are they safe? So I, it kind of depends on what all is going on. So each case is individual. And so I'd have to know a little bit more about the situation, but generally I would rather you do lighter compression for just vascular insufficiency. Um, but if it's, if it's now a global state where the lymphatics are involved, it, it can be quite helpful. So, um, okay, let's talk about food. Who loves food? So if you guys love food, give me a little um, yummy smiley face in the comments that food, especially if you believe that food can heal and food is medicine because it can heal and support your body in so many different ways. And in fact, the vascular system really does well with food. And I have listed, I think five foods I've got in front of me that are hugely beneficial. So my first one are chia seeds. And notice this is from an Aldi haul, yay. So these, are you guys, who's eating chia seeds? Chia seeds contain omegas, very supportive of your vascular walls. They've got good fiber, and what we find is fiber is really essential. So there's a gut health connection to our vascular um, insufficiency, particularly for a multitude of reasons. But one of the things is I, I find, and I've been polling my patients for over a decade now, and about 85% of my patients who have vascular, some degree of vascular insufficiency, and even lymphedema, they will also have some form of chronic constipation where they're not moving their bowels uh, three to four times a day. And that is the quali that's qualification. So if you are less than three to four times a day, moving your bowels, having bowel movements regularly, that's constipative, that's a constipative state. So yes, Carrie, welcome. Yeah, food is medicine. Chia seeds are fantastic. And chia seeds, um, 
they're great. Like the two tablespoons is equivalent of eight grams of dietary fiber. Holy cow, that's huge. Ideally, we should be upwards of 35, 30, 35 to 40 grams of fiber content on a daily basis. So I actually like to recommend more fiber dense, but also has omegas, it's got good nutrients. It's a, in a raw form, it's got a lot of amino acids, a lot of really big benefits to the gut overall and just your body. So I'm a big fan of chia seeds. Also bananas. Do you eat a banana a day? Give me a banana emoji. Who's eating a banana a day? I love bananas. And I will usually have half a banana in my morning smoothie where I add in a whole bunch of greens and red powders and protein and collagen and all sorts of good stuff. But bananas are fantastic. And Mandy, you need some help with chia seed recipes. That's a good, good um, video content recommendation. I will work on highlighting some of those. So thank you for that. Chia seeds, you do chia pudding. I will grind these up and I will put them a little bit. I don't put a whole lot because it gets by it very fibrous, but I'll put a little bit of chia seeds in my smoothies as well, just to thicken them up. Um, but bananas are fantastic because they contain magnesium. And I am, I have a video content uh, idea that I haven't shot yet, but I'm going to highlight on YouTube that different forms of bananas give us different nutrients. <laughs> so that a green banana is very different than this banana that's starting to get a little, a little brown. Did you guys know that? And if you didn't, would you watch that video? So let me know. But okay, so just bananas overall, go with as green as you can because there is better fiber in a green banana than there is this one that's starting to get a little ripe. Um, so, and I will put my bananas in a refrigerator um, to keep them a little bit more ripe or less ripe than this little guy. So he's left over from our last batch of bananas. So bananas are good primarily because of magnesium. And then the other thing that I love um, is avocado. And unfortunately, the price of avocados have just gone skyrocketing. So where I used to get 39 cent avocados at Aldi, now they're like $1.19. So we are not eating as many avocados, just budgetarily wise, but they are very beneficial. About a half of an avocado is really good to mix. And here's a little bonus tip. I have a video where I highlight that if you put your banana near your avocado, the banana, the methane, from, I think it's the methane, the gases from the banana, no, ethanol, ethanol gas from the banana will ripen your avocado. Did you guys know that? How cool is that? So I will keep my avocados in my fridge. I'll pull one out at night and I'll put it on my bunch of bananas and that will get this bad boy ready. So yay, Beverly, woohoo, Parissa, Carrie, everybody's loving the bananas. So, and avocados. Okay, so avocado is big. Again, avocado itself has magnesium, there's a lot of good fat, healthy fats. Um, I, I'm just a huge fan of making sure that we have banana and avocado in our diet on a daily basis. Um, the, other, the other two items that I love are um, cilantro, and I also love parsley. So those are two herbs that you could add in. I wouldn't necessarily put those in a smoothie. You could put them in a salad. Um, and I do have a lot of folks that might take those in like a herbal tincture or a capsule. Um, thanks, Prosa. So those are five foods that I recommend. And I want to also go a little bit further about magnesium because magnesium can really help offset some of the cramping, the pain, and the swelling. And there's three kind of versions that I recommend. Um, there is like the Garden of Life. This is a whole food based Magnesium, I love whole food. First is, is food-based, and this comes from um, brown rice. It comes from um, a protein, mag so it's an organic brown rice protein magnesium chelate. So this is an extracted magnesium from food. We are, we're meant to absorb food and nutrients from food better. So that's how we're, you know, we eat and, and consume and, and pass contents every day, ideally. So magnesium is very beneficial. So you wanna go with the chelated more bioavailable forms. So that's one option. I have these all linked in the description. Doctor's Best is another one. And they're all like, if you wanna look at the powders, what they look like, and they're just, oops. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> now it smells like orange. <laughs> um, so I got the powder, the orange, and the, or the orange flavor. This is a flavorless. Um, so this is the one I put in my smoothie so I don't kind of mix. So I will do, I, this is like my routine. 
I will have a scoop, which is 200 milligrams, so it's half of a magnesium dose. I like to actually spread my magnesium out throughout the day. And so because I put half a banana and half an avocado in my um, smoothie, I'm getting magnesium for both of these sources. And then I put the powder, which is half of your normal dose. So you're getting a good dose in the morning. And then in the evening, usually I take like a, a bath, relax, soak or whatnot, edit videos and do all sorts of content. I or read, I will have this, and this is orange effervescent. It's got an orange flavor. And this I'll have at night. And a scoop of this is 350 milligrams, which is about 85%. So I try and really get like, ideally, I can tolerate between 800 and 1200 milligrams of magnesium. So despite what you might see, 400 milligrams is your daily dose, but I find most people, people can tolerate more. Um, and the other option here is Natural Vitality, the Calm. You're probably familiar with this brand. And they have, it's a, an ionic magnesium citrate um, and it's 350 milligrams. And I'm okay with this version because it's ionic. So it gets easily absorbed. We have less of the bowel kind of issues with your traditional magnesium citrate. My magnesium glyconate is the version that's the best kind of form. And that's what I get in Doctor's Best. Um, so for magnesium, def deficiencies of magnesium, you know, vein insufficiencies are part of that. Hormonal imbalances, headaches, muscle cramps, dehydration, poor concentration, skin irritation, eczema, psoriasis, all of, all of those um, symptoms are very common and, and synonymous with uh, magnesium deficiencies. And in fact, magnesium is needed in over 300 um, enzymatic reactions in your body. It's pretty phenomenal. So I, I think everybody, anybody watching this, grab some magnesium, please. Your body will thank you and you will feel so good. And it's going to relax your vascular channel so it's less kind of eh, pumped up. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to calm your body and you're going to sleep better. So it is so fantastic. My last and final tip and carry, yes, using magnesium glyconate at night, sleep, sleep's good. I give it to Gabriel and you can bathe with it. With it. So like um, Epsom salts is a, a version of magnesium. You could put um, chelated magnesium oil or spray on your body. I will use magnesium oil on the bottom of Gabriel's feet, my little toddler to help him sleep. So it's so fantastic. Um, Mandy, anytime I take calm, I'm very weepy, crying so much. Have you ever heard of this? Um, I haven't, but what I would say is experiment with the different versions. I had mentioned it's an ionic magnesium citrate. You might do better on a magnesium glyconate and the glyconate would be in the doctor's best version or even the food based magnesium. So there's a lot of options. Try a different version, I would say, and see. And it might also be, I know Calm does have other things that they might add into it. Like this is the original unflavored, like it's just pure white in here. I'll try not to spray you guys with my powder. <laughs> Do you see that? It's white. Some of them will have like a sleep version. Sometimes they have a cardio or um, like a calcium version. They've got a lot. They've, they've expanded. I've had them on my shelves for over a decade and they have gotten really expansive with the options. They just used to have three flavors. Um, okay. I love powdered form carry to that point. Um, powder is easily absorbed um, and I love that. So easy integration, quick for your body to digest. I'm not a big fan of capsules. Uh, you know, first of all, you got to swallow those things, keep track of them. I feel like it's a lot easier to incorporate. You can do a lot with it. I have patients that will add a magnesium powder into their yogurt, you know, like their nut yogurt or like their own kefir that they make. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of incorporate it. The easiest process is to be, you know, liquid powder. And then if you need to supplementation with capsules. Okay. So let me share with you pain reduction options because you can topically put on CBD cream. This we sell here in our clinic and it smells uh, smell of vision. Smell this. It smells like camphor, ah, menthol. So it's really good. It just opens up the sinuses <laughs> like when you smell it, but this is what it does on the skin. The CBD, there's about 500 milligrams of CBD in this. So a good like swab of this. And I actually put it on my carotid too. Um, this is very relaxing by the way. You put this on the area, you know, that vein, like the vein, I still have it. It's still, it's not popping out. I think since I am not so, I know what it is, what's caused it. 
Um, I'm not so like mentally aware of it. You know how that goes? Like you get a little anxious about it or have like anxiety, like, oh my gosh. So, you know, sometimes our mental focus causes us to experience things differently. But either way, put the, you know, smear the cream on the vein, the whole area that's um, sore, tender, seriously within seconds. Like you, you get cooling and then the hit of CBD, it's 26 seconds for the nutrients to get absorbed in through the skin. It's so fantastic. So I love it, love it, love it. Um, and I have Topical as well. The um, Octagon Biolabs, that's the brand. Clean, no THC, so I don't have to worry about drug testing positive for this. This is so crazy. CBD is like the Wild West. Um, but I use and recommend Octagon Biolabs. They now have a 3,000 milligram bottle dose, which each single dose is 100 milligrams, which is very potent. So I will couple up internal CBD as well as topical. Topical is great because you're going to affect the localized nerve bundles. It's like, you know, sometimes you get like a nerve block if somebody does like surgery or, or even like dental stuff. It's that's kind of like what it is. It just calms the nerves and that's really good just to calm the vascular channel and it reduces inflammation. So big fan of that globally just to just to help. Um, okay, so those are some tips. I have a ton of other herbs, a ton of other food items, as I rec recommended in here, and I'll have a link um, when this is all wrapped up. There'll be a link in the description, and we'll make sure we put a link, um, and I'll just email or message, we'll message everybody a link to that if you want to check it out. It's $4.99 to download that. Um, also, comment winner, um, comment, so comment down below. We'll, uh, once we wrap with this, we'll choose one of you here on the live. Um, and just type in, uh, and, and I don't know if you can tag them, but at Juzo or at Juzo Compression, we're going to choose a lucky winner. And so we'll just have you, I'll send you the size chart, the catalog online. You'll just call them and they will drop ship one of these. You can either get them with the feed, you can get the little stockings. So 2000 series is yours for one lucky winner. And did you guys know it's, now, I don't know if it's international, but it's National Lipstick Day. So yay to lipstick. I wanted to share with you the lip color I'm wearing is Oleo Eoso. I thought that was kind of fun. I'm usually the last to know the national days, like National Adopt Your Pet Day or like Rescue Dog Day. So um, yeah, so that's today. And because of that, I'm also going to choose winner winners. I've got these on my, um, on my table. So I've got two, four, six, seven. So I'm gonna choose seven of you. We're gonna send you lip glosses. These are organic natural health resource lip glosses. How cute are they? Um, but I also wanna do a little housekeeping. So every Friday, every other Friday, so the second and fourth Friday, I'll be going live here on Facebook at noon. And we will be starting to create the content topics. And any topics you want, I've got Dr. Mel's box, which is like a, a, a mailbox where you just message us. We're recording now all of the um, questions and trying to really put together um, content that is relevant and important to you, which that's obviously you're the driver of so much of my content and information and education. Um, so it's not just me blabbing on away, but you literally are walking away with impactful stuff. Um, so that's what's kind of coming out on, um, thank you. Um, that's what's coming out on Facebook. So second and fourth Fridays, going live at 12 noon. And today we're launching on, over on Instagram, which you know there's partnering here on Facebook. Um, over on the Instagram, we are running a contest, or not a contest, a giveaway. So July is a big birthday month. We have celebrated five years. So we had our YouTube five, five year anniversary on YouTube, YouTube anniversary um, on July 11th. And then next Wednesday, it's my birthday. Woo! So I'll be turning the wonderful age of 41. Uh, so <laughs> I'm getting older and more mature every year. Um, but we're going to be celebrating that with, I'm featuring all of my favorite things. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. And my handle's at Natural Health Resources. Um, you'll see an IGTV come out later where I like detail all of the products so you can see them a little bit better than our, our one image. But there, all you have to do is enter, follow three of the brands that have put out some great um, gift cards. It's over $500 value. Like we have a $200 Ana Ono gift certificate for bras and they have the best robe ever. I love that robe. So hopefully the winner gets one of those. And then we have Aaliyah, we have um, 
Aldi ah, and TJ Maxx. So you can go TJ Maxx and Aldi shopping, which are great for back to school. Um, so lots of giveaways over on Instagram happening. And um, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to join you all today. Um, if you have any other questions, comment down below. We'll be monitoring the feed here. And I'm just so grateful to tune in. And yes, Jim, Leo's rule, yay. I love Leo's. All of my good friends, this is kind of funny. All of my good friends have birthdays literally within six days, like six days before and six days after my birthday. So like since the 23rd, actually the 20th, the 23rd, the 24th, and then we'll be celebrating um, up until I think the 5th or 6th of August. So we've got lots of, lots of stuff. And I have two roommates, <laughs> good friends, that have birthdays before mine. So in college and as young adults, we would celebrate like at, you know, the, that evening in between. Um, so thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope this was impactful. Please um, like, comment, share this if you feel inclined to your community. Um, and you can tag any friends that you feel should uh, watch because it might be beneficial to them preventatively. And yay, Parissa, August. So there you go, August and July. Woo woo. Um, so likewise um, to everybody, thank you for participating. I appreciate your time. Your time is valuable and I know you could spend it elsewhere. So much gratitude, tons of love, and I will hopefully see you over on Instagram. If not, I will definitely see you over on my YouTube channel. And for sure next uh, in two weeks. All right, see you guys later. Have a good day. Well, there you go, friends. How fun was that video? I hope you found this impactful. I hope you comment down below because I'm also going to be giving one lucky winner here, the 2000 series of the Juzo. You can choose the foot list with the foot. You can choose the stockings that go up to the knee. So you guys will be, um, you'll benefit from the giveaway. Also, I'm going to be giving away seven lip glosses. So comment down below. As always, it's so good to see you. Look out for our next video here on our channel. Have a great day.